relationship. So really what I want to know is in your relationship, how do you create value? Huh? Make it worth something, huh? All right. <laughs> All right, now, now, now that's interesting, right? <laughs> okay. Now, now but, but wait a minute. Let's go back. Let's, let's, let's think about this a little more, and then let's go back. How do you create value in your relationship? Say, say you want to get sex. Say you want respect. How do you create value? Are you creating value? You might not be. That's what I'm asking, right? Good sex, fun to be around. Good sense of humor. Now, now I want to make sure we go back to where we began, right? Those are, those are things that I might value, right? But those might not necessarily be things that my partner values. So I got to be, so what's the problem? What's the problem with that? Huh? Selfishness. Say something more about that. What do you mean selfishness gets in the way? All right, now I didn't necessarily want to go to you pissing her off so quick, right? I didn't want to go there. I <laughs> I didn't want to put you on blast, right? I just wanted us to talk about values for a minute, right? So, so like, I thought, because I thought your point, your initial point was a good one, right? My value, it, you know, what I'm offering might not be valuable to the person that I'm offering it to. And that, in and of itself, creates a conflict, right? So how do I find out? Yeah, but it might be easier just to ask, huh? Do you like this? Are you interested in this, right? Observe, right, 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 right. You got to be present, right, to find out. And a value has to be, you have to be interested in it. See, what might be undermining it is that I don't value being interested in what, you know, I don't care what she likes. I don't care what anybody, because that gets back to the self-centeredness, right? So we all are self-centered. We all got our best, our own interests, you know, at, in heart, right? And we want to try to, like, balance that a little bit, right? Because that, like, is the beginning of being abusive. You haven't begun, you know, remember, physical abuse is rare, that you hit somebody. Most of it is emotional and verbal, right? But it all, but it, it has a lot to do with values, what you value, right? And our values can change. You don't have to keep the same values. If you're in your relationship and you're following a street code, what do I mean by street code? What do I mean by that? What do you think I mean by that? A street code. Yeah, about jungle laws, right? Survival of the fittest. You know, I'll beat your ass. You know that, right? I'm, you know, a manhood as, as uh, practiced by being destructive and crazy. You know, that's the kind of dude I am. You know, then you're going to have some different kinds of problems. Welcome to the group, right? So now we're trying to, like, change those values, right, by looking at values in general and then how values affect you and then your own values because you can play around with that. You can change that. You don't have to stay the same. The past isn't the future, right? But we got to look at values. We got to look at how, and I want to make sure today you leave here knowing how you can create a different kind of value in your relationship. All of them, too, not just the one with your partner. So how do you create value in a relationship? You were right there, huh? You were you were right to it, huh? She got to be in here also, huh? <laughs> no, wait, wait, wait. I appreciate that feeling, right? I appreciate. I'm like that right now, right? Where is she, right? But, <laughs> but, but, but she's not here, right? We're here, and we can change. We can change the whole thing. Right? We can change it all. We don't really need her to be here. It'd be fun if she was here. It'd be a nice, nice thing. I think it would, right? It might not be, because I might not want her telling on me. Yeah. Right? Huh? The real girl. 
Not the one that's in here sharing clean and maybe living dirty, right? She'd be sitting right next to me, and I ask her what happened. Right, that, right? <laughs> huh? <laughs> Might not want that. So we got to be careful what we ask for. But, like, let's get back. How do you create value in your relationship? Huh? Well, create some value. I want you, your value to go up. How we do it? You think it's money, huh? You gonna put some money on it? Money helps, right? But a lot of rich dudes, but wait, a lot of rich dudes jack up their partners. Effort, huh? So, so, so effort, right? Effort. It's definitely one of the small things. Well, effort's a little effort. I think when you start doing the little thankless jobs in the relationship, you're wrong. It's a chaotic thing. So you said the small stuff, huh? Look, he said mundane. Look, look, look. Look, look, look. If you want to be good at something, anything, you got to be willing to do the mundane stuff. Right? Look, look. Look at, look at Steph Curry, right? Look at Steph Curry. Steph Curry is top of his game. But what a lot of people go to see is his workout. He does the mundane stuff. He bounces the ball with both hands. He's catching the ball with a different hand. He's looking away and bouncing. He's doing that stuff, the 10,000 hours worth of stuff that most people are not going to get up and do. He's doing. And that's why his, you know, we see his game. We see the tip of the iceberg, but we don't see this part. All the hours alone. Hard work. That's the mundane stuff. You want a good relationship, it's the mundane stuff. You're saying the little thing. Right, that I got to be willing to do. So now let's. I'm trying. What I'm trying to do now is point out what those little things are. Well, yeah, and not and not just not just there. When you realize that you made a mistake, that you made a mistake, make a prompt amends for it. Now we got a word for that. We're gonna get into. We're gonna call that a repair attempt. Right. Make the repair attempt. You're gonna. You know, we say conflict is natural in relationships. Right. But what's not so natural is who makes the attempt. Now, you come in here, I expect you to make it. Because now you know how powerful it is. I don't expect you to leave that on the table. You make it, right? Because it's going to increase your value. It's going to make you feel better about yourself. You might, you got to get used to it, though. You're not always wrong just because you make a repair attempt. Some of the stuff that you have... Uh, you get in conflict with, with your partner over, you can't fix anyway. You're not going to fix it, not with violence, not with yelling, none of that. She's still going to be the way she is. You're still going to be the way you are. But I want you to have enough value to be able to keep the damn relationship together and not come here. I don't want to see you guys anymore. I see you at, like I always say, I see you at Costco. If you're around the hors d'oeuvres, you know that hot food? If you're around that, I'll see you. If you're not there, I probably won't see you. Because that's where I am, right? All right, look, we got we to straighten some stuff up, right? We got to create some value. How? How? Okay, I'll lead it off. Right, you got to have some willingness, right? Have some little willingness. Here, I'll throw one up. Honesty. Yeah. All right, so 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 look. Look, look. I want to create value, right? So one of the ways I can do it is by being honest. Right? Honesty, right? Huh? Give me something else. Well, one of the ways I can do it is with uh, I guess that's openness, right? Openness, open mindedness. Transparency, yeah, transparency. Make you feel uncomfortable? Yeah, it's just an anxious type of thing. That doesn't help with all the other turbulence. Right, right, right. We like that, right? 
We like that. Now, here's, I'm creating a problem for you, though, right? And the problem is you guys are coming here, and we're getting some practice being transparent and being open. And you may go back to your relationship with, a, with greater ability to be transparent, so don't punish your partner if she's not where you are, right? Don't get mad at her. Don't go home and hit her over the head with the stuff we work on. That's another form of being abusive, right? And, and definitely don't go home and say, Gerald said... Don't throw me under the bus, okay? <laughs> Point out the YouTube video or something like that, but don't go home and say, Cheryl says, yeah. yeah. I don't like you, and I don't like him either. <laughs> All right, so we got openness, right? What about, uh, what about kindness? Hmm? Kindness. Yeah. Kindness has various forms. You just mentioned one, empathy. Kindness. This stuff cost any money? Nope. How come nobody ever talked to you about it? <laughs> you close, right? Because they can't get you to spend any money on it. That's how they're affecting our values. See, you need to write cologne to have a good relationship. <laughs> That's what you need. You need to write car. Yeah, you need to write car to have a good relationship. You need to be drinking the right brown liquor. That's the market affecting us, right? Yeah, have a good family. You need this, this, and this, right? Material, right? But these things don't cost anything. You have as much of it as you want, and they will increase your value. Huh? Why we do the meditation in the, in the beginning of the group? Why? Yeah, clear your mind. So you can practice some openness. You can practice being, being honest because your stuff is going to come up. Yeah, and you can just be honest with yourself to just know, yeah, you, goddamn, I'm not perfect. She's not perfect either, right? Kindness, being kind. I know you wanted to say, goddamn, shut up. For those people that were talking down below, that was kindness. People moving around in the room, it's kindness to accept that they're moving around. Everybody can't deal with it the same way, but that's kindness, right? Uh, what else? What else can we, how do we create value? Yeah, consistent, right, right, consistent. Dependable. Yeah, dependable, right? So, so uh, what happens when you're consistent and dependable? There's a byproduct from that. What happens? Ah, that's what I wanted. Thank you. Thank you for coming, right? We need that. We're going to save these relationships and be better and be happier. We're going to have to build some trust. And to get trust, i got to be consistent, right? See, they haven't stopped selling crack cocaine. They haven't stopped. Hookers haven't stopped being on the street just because I stopped. I got to consistently not take the first one. And then I can trust that I can go anywhere and be okay. Right? I can have a good life. Right? Consistency. That's around the mundane stuff. This is the stuff nobody really wants to do. Right? See, it's, it's like more exciting for me to buy a new outfit and think that's going to be the trick. Right, to keeping it together. It's, it's exciting for me to get involved in the market and get something new, right? But this is the mundane stuff that people don't want to do that leads to having not only a good relationship but a damn good life, right? Values, right? We can play around with this. You can still buy new stuff. You can still engage in the market, but don't get out of balance, right? They want all your money. They don't want you to save nothing. They want you to feel, you know, it's kind of based on making you feel miserable, right? If you feel miserable, then what are you going to do? You're going to go buy something to try to fix it, right? So how do we create value? I'm going to try to spell this word. Resiliency? That's what that's supposed to be. Even if you on YouTube, that's what that's, that's supposed to be, resiliency, Right? So what, what do I mean by resiliency? Right, right. A lot of times when we think about resiliency, we think about the big stuff. You know, like I, get, I got run over by a car, and I, and I get back up and dust myself off. That's a form of resiliency. But I'm talking more like everyday resiliency, where she says something out the side of her neck that hurts my feelings. I got, and it don't take me three or four days. Right. That's the resiliency I'm talking about. 
You know how we get sometime around the house, I just ain't speaking to your ass no more. <laughs> right, we pout, right? We were talking about that last week. We start pouting around the house, and she knows something wrong with us, but she doesn't know what, right? Right, so that's resiliency that allows me to come back. Right, 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 right. Resiliency. This in life, right? We got to keep coming back, right? You even okay? Let's leave her out of it. Who's got a plan in here to do something? Just anything. You got a plan? Anything. Your life, right? Sometimes it doesn't go the way you want it to go, and you got to yeah, and you got to be resilient. You got to come back. You know, because there are a lot of different ways to get where you're trying to go. You might think you're going to just take this one street and get there and, have, and find out you got to go around the car, through the bushes, through the park. Right. And that's a part of resiliency, continuing to come back. Right. And that's how you create value. Because, you know, if she thinks you don't want to be, you know, look, I'm, I'm trying to keep you guys out of this position. Let this motherfucker do one more thing. Right? I don't want you to be like that, you know, where your relationship is just fragile. Well, fuck it then. <laughs> right? Because you're going to have an argument. God damn. <laughs> you know that. <laughs> I think, I, right, he can laugh a little bit. I was concerned about him at first, but he can laugh a little bit. I think he might make it. Right? He's identifying with some stuff in here. Right? Uh, look, look. We got, you know, okay, uh, uh, how about acceptance, right? Acceptance. Now, people get fouled up right here, right? Because they think that acceptance means you like it. That's not what that means. It just means you accept that it's the way that it is, right? It doesn't mean it's going to go away. It doesn't mean you don't have a problem. It's just like, God damn, this is where I am right now. And you don't have to have a fit. We can't have a fit. We can't have a tantrum because we're not getting our way. I'm trying to prevent this. Could you step out of the house, please? And all you had was a fit. All you had was a tantrum. You haven't hit anybody, right? You haven't done anything. You just had a fit. And here they come, and when you have to step out, you're going to have to step out, right? That's what we want to try to avoid. So you're not having a, a meltdown, right? So like some, some acceptance, right? These things don't cost anything. We don't talk about this in our society. Even the institutions that are supposed to talk about it don't talk about it, really. Right. They don't talk about this anymore. And these things get assigned you know, in 12-step in recovery, these things are, are considered um, spiritual principles. In the church, they're considered uh, religious principles. These are biological. They don't have to be assigned to any religion or, or any 12-step uh, recovery. They don't. These things are designed to keep you in your relationship. Your relationship is as important to you as food and water they don't have anything to do with religion or they don't have to have that. We, that's a lens we could look through, but they don't have to. This is just a way of creating value. All right? And uh, you don't, if you can create value, you don't have to worry so much about your relationship. Where can your partner, your partner can find, you can find someone crazy to go out with anytime. You can find that. That's not difficult. Your partner can find somebody that act a fool. If she wanted to, she could go out and just find that. We can all find that. But where can you find someone that's trying to practice honesty? Where can you find someone that's trying to practice openness? It's rare. Right. This is rare. This is what creates value. You don't have to be, you know, a real, right, right, right. Right. So kindness, right? Kindness, consistency, 
re resiliency, acceptance. If you can begin practice just a little bit more, right? Just a little bit more, it's going to increase your value. Right? And you don't really have to work. Even if she leaves, somebody else is looking for this. Right? So you don't always. And look, look, let me tell you something about being abusive. Women are not your problem. That's not your problem. In order to be abusive, you have to have a partner. So if you say to yourself, I'm abusive, right, that means you're always going to have a partner. So you, that, that's not the issue. The issue is the way I act in relationships when I get triggered. That's the issue. You don't have to worry about her. She's not going to leave you. you. You like handsome. You like charismatic. You all that shit, right? That's not the issue. The issue is when you get upset, we have a fit, a tantrum. We start lashing out. Right. And we give up control during a 10-minute meditation. You actively give it up so you can regain it. That's why I got you doing it. Right, 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 right. And really, I'm just sensitive. Right. That guys think, okay. Right, 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 right. So that's a that's another that's another thing that creates value, having some sensitivity. Sensitivity, right? That. So that creates value. Commitment, right? Creates value. I used to think, you know, my in my drug use and abuse years, I thought commitment was the thing that was making me unhappy. That's not it at all. When I got clean, I was able to commit, and it's the commitment, the meaning that you get from the commitment makes you happy. I never finished anything because I couldn't launch the commitment. The commitment is key. It makes you happy, right? It creates value. Get it done, right? And, and weed is, oh, my favorite drug is a terrible drug for that. Oh, it's terrible. You think you're going to be in the space program. <laughs> But you're still eating big bowls of cereal in mom's house. You know, you think you're going to do some shit, right? I thought I was. But damn, I couldn't finish, right? So <laughs> values. And I thought I couldn't live without it because it was a value, right? So we want to create some value. Look, if you, you, who's in business? Anybody in business? Anybody working for somebody? Well, in, you're in business. Everybody in here is in business. You're trying to create value, right? <laughs> We're trying to create value. And if you can create value, you don't have to worry if you're creating value. You could leave that job if you don't like it as long as you know how to create value. That's the main thing, right? So these things. Way of a way of creating value, right? So we say small things, we say effort, we say mundane, you know. Kindness would be in, uh, you know, this is, a, this is a word, like what does it mean to be kind? I want to make sure you understand how to have more kindness in your life. How do you, how, how do you be kind? Certainly. Right, 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 right. Let, let's, let's try this. Oh, that's good, and that's right, right? No wrong answer, just your answer, right? That's right. Having some sensitivity for the other person, right? But now, let's try soft eyes. Right? Soft eyes. Soft voice. Soft hands. Uh, what what Otis Ready say? Try a little tenderness, right? Now look, this is hard, right? This is hard to have kindness, right? If we haven't experienced kindness, you, it's going to be hard for you to give away something that you don't have. It's going to be difficult. Put your phone away, please. Um, it's going to be hard for you to get that, right? 
So we gotta, we gotta make sure, right, that I'm putting myself in positions to receive kindness, because I don't really even know what that is, right? So I'm, I'm, when I leave, I'm going out, I'm being around kind people. I change my playmates and play places now. I'm trying to get kindness so that I kind of know what to do, you know, the language people speak. But that's also what I'm saying. I need to go where kindness is practiced. Because I'll do what I see other people doing. I'll fit in. You mentioned that when you came in. It was the way we did things, right? That was a value, right? All right, so create value. All right, now, I want to make sure. You know, I don't know if society, um, like you, I think you said, uh, society doesn't quite kind of. I look at business. Yeah, well, and, and what you're talking about is where, is where we began, right? What's marketed to us? Well, what's marketed to us is the tough boy image. I'll use you. I'll destroy you to get what I want. You don't, right? We're, our society is beginning to practice mind over matter. I don't mind. You don't matter, <laughs> right? So, so you, put, you pointed out something that's really important. But the object of what we're doing here is how do you maintain your goodness in the midst of evil? Right. This is important what we're doing because you're going to stand alone, right? You're not, you might not have that many friends doing this, right? But that also creates value. Value is something that's rare, right? When something is rare, it's not just because something is popular doesn't make it right. And just because something is po not popular doesn't make it wrong. And so each of us has to figure out where we want to be in the world, right? And you're absolutely right. We're not practicing this. Sure. Not, not, wait, 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 wait. You're on to something. Not only can you lose friends, you can go back home and she not like you. You start being calm around the house. Who is this person? I need you to slap me. <laughs> right, I don't even know who you are. Right? Yeah, what you not what you mean you're not smoking any weed? Huh? What you mean you're not getting drunk no more? What what do you mean we got to turn the TV off and talk? You know. Right, right. And don't blame me. <laughs> no, you can blame me on that one. You know what I mean? All of a sudden, I'm like, all of a sudden. Now look, look, look. How do you deal with that? Because that's real. How do we deal with that? How do we deal with that? Well, how do we deal with it? Consistency. Look. I, you know, look, I got, I got some direct experience. You know, I used drugs for a long time, then I stopped. I, then I was put in what's called double jeopardy, right, what I call double jeopardy, right, where they didn't like me when I was using drugs, but then when I quit using drugs, they didn't like me either, <laughs> you know. And so what I learned from that, though, is you can't do it for them. Right, you got to do it because it's the right thing to do. All of this, right? Because I, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, if you meditate, you'll be doing it alone. I guarantee you. If you decide to practice this meditation, you'll be meditating alone. More, there won't be anybody else meditating with you, right? It's and it's the, if, yeah. Out, it. yeah, it's the right thing to do. You got to do it because it's the right thing. And you got to have some, you got to build some, uh, with practice, you build trust that things are changing. And what are we trying to change? Yeah, ourselves. And when you change, everything else changes. That's why we don't need them here, the women here. That's why even if they said they wanted to come, I'd be like, hold on. You know, we need, look, we need a chance to just talk man to man. Right? 
we, this is our business. We need to take care of this. Yeah. If you want to, now if you want to leave here and take her out and talk, feel free. If you want to arrange something where you're talking with some other couple, feel free. But we need a minute to breathe and to talk about what's going on. I don't think this will hurt you, right? And like, you know, as a, as a psychotherapist, I can't even talk to you and your partner if you've been throwing blows. You know, I can't, I can't do it because I can't guarantee anybody's going to be safe. You know, and then you driving home. Bitch, why'd you say that? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I can't protect you. You know? <laughs> I know you're laughing, right? I know. That's what I, you know, I got to keep everybody safe. Huh? That is what, yeah. <laughs> So, so it's good that we get together, right? My problem wasn't with women. My problem is I didn't have any men around that could explain to me how to be a damn man without being destructive. That, that could explain that even though I was raised in the jungle and as a man, I still got feelings. How do you deal with that, right? <laughs> I was raised on 80th and international, but shit, I'm sensitive. That's why my ass is fighting. <laughs> my feelings get hurt. You know, like the guys come for anger management. What's anger management? What is that? That's fear management. That's what we're going to do. We're going to manage your fear. Because it can be no attack without fear. What you're afraid of. <laughs> you ain't got to jump on nobody. Right? So we need to talk. We can improve the situation a lot. Just being calm. Just being honest. Open. Now look, look, don't you dare go home and tell everything. Don't you dare do that. Point to the point to the point to the video if you want to. Don't you dare go home and tell everything. Right? You only make amends if it won't hurt you or the other person. Do not tell everything. Right? That's what you got us for. Right? We turn the fucking camera off and we'll get to it, right? But don't tell everything. I've been honest. I went on some old spiritual shit one time and told a woman some, some stuff. She ran fast so fast, she made me start running. <laughs> you know what I mean? We want to keep you in your damn relationship. We don't want her sleeping with one eye open. Some of us have done some shit, right? They don't need to know all that. You can talk to somebody, right? You don't need to tell her. And that's not being dishonest. That's having some privacy, right? We're being, we can be responsible in not telling everything because you don't, if you're not doing it, you don't have to talk about it anymore to her. Some of you, like, if you have the kind of life where you've done some stuff prior to meeting her, she doesn't need to know no way. You can talk to somebody else, talk to one of us about it, right? And keep our confidence. Trying to keep you stable. Recovery works best in a stable environment. If you start talking too much about what you've done in the past, it becomes unstable. And rightfully so. I was driving with my lady yesterday. She kept talking about, you know, like, stuff, you know, before. Yeah. And I was telling her, I was like, man, look, I'm not going back to jail. <laughs> right. So whatever you going back to look at, you know, that was in the fire back then, yeah. I'm not looking past that. I'm right. Right. Now look, 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 look. Somebody tried to go back into your past. What do you say? Hey. Isn't recovery wonderful? Is that the truth? It's the truth. You live better today than you did then, right? I'm not saying don't be honest. I'm just saying you don't have to tell all your business. See, here's the here's the problem. There's a, there's a number of problems that result from talking too much to your partner about yourself, right? Amen. Right? One of the things is it affects the sex. Anybody want to affect the sex affected negatively? Well, don't talk too much about your history, right? You, you need to have, each person needs to have some privacy, right? Remember we were talking about this the other week. You know, there needs to be a bridge to cross in order for there to be some sense of, ah, I want to see this person, right? When we take this position where we're one, I don't want you. I want what's across the fence, right? So we want to, like, have some privacy, 
Now, the thing that interferes with that, as we were talking about a few weeks ago, is my insecurity. Why are you wearing that dress? How come you got perfume on? I thought you were only going to be gone five minutes. See, that I haven't dealt with my insecurity that won't allow this person to be a, a different human being, or vice versa. Where are you going? Why are you taking a shower? Why are you wearing a necktie? You know? I could just be putting it on because I like putting it on. You see, I, I want to maintain some, some in, you know, what is, okay, this is a fire. Yeah, well, this is a fire. What does a fire need? A fire needs air. And if we want to keep the fire going between you and your partner, you want to give it some air. Yeah, I want to be away from her some, psychically, physically. Then I want to desire her. And this is coming from somebody that's only got one woman, right? I want to be away from her, though. And I get insecure, I wonder, all that kind of stuff. But that's what the meditation is for. Me to sit with my suffering around it. Damn, I miss you. I need to be able to say that. Right? I ain't a punk. I ain't nothing. I just miss you. Right? You don't have to be around me. All. I don't want her underfoot all the time. Because then I get mad at her. Right? Damn, why are you underfoot? Why you, can't you, you eat that? Right? And so the distance can create some value. Like, I want to be around this person. And I used to take the distance with drugs. Right? But you don't have to do that anymore. Right? So value, right? How are we creating value? Now, let's finish this chapter two. What did we read? Uh, my buddy went to Mexico, right? Uh huh. He bought me this bottle uh, for my birthday. I'm like, look, as soon as I get off of it, I know I'm not coming back to this fucking building before. Right. <laughs> Find out where you're comfortable, right? Like, like, I might be able to be way more transparent than you because I got a comfort level now that I've established, right? Then I'm still not telling everything, right? So, like, let's say she, like, you know, Black Friday and all that shit, mm -hmm. sales, and, you know, you get pissed off. So I'm like, look, you got to go back to work at once. I ain't seen you in, like, that many weeks. I right. the bottle. So, like, I don't give a fuck all that shopping. Start standing in line. I don't give a fuck. Fucking 50%, 70% discount. <laughs> I'm giving you a free discount right now, letting you know that I just want to chill. You know, I still ain't got that shit back. So good. You know, she looked, she's like, I do too. And I was like, who are you? Like, I was expecting, like, no, I want to go shopping. Some pushback. Yeah, you know, yeah. she's just like, you know, she, yeah. I, I stepped into the unknown. And she's like, yeah, I didn't think nothing. Like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah, you're different. And they got a good, 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 uh, Response, yeah. Because earlier in the day, I was riding around the store. She's like, everything wrong? I was like, at first, I was going to just be like, nah. But then I looked, I was like, man, we ain't been to hella goddamn Black Friday. It's like, right. we stand in line, the same TV going to be on sale tomorrow, the right. same price at right. 10 o'clock. Right. Right. Damn, I can't say that. I just have to get that. Right, out. right, right. You ever say it? Than holding it in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Light, it's just like, and being mad. Yeah, huh? you know, dude across the, you got the right away across the street. Like, man, why you can't walk right, right, that, yeah, 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 yeah. We call that. Look, look, look. We call that a may pop. You know, like your, like your tires. The tires run ball. They're may pop, right? They could go at any time, right? <laughs> you don't want to be a may pop in life, right? <laughs> you guys gonna be messed up, man. <laughs> you guys are not gonna be the same, right? <laughs> <laughs> now, now look, we still we still talking about we still talking about uh, creating value, right? This is what we got to think about, right? We got to toy around with this, play around with creating some value in your relationship, right? <laughs> well, look, you you got it though. You know my whole approach is. If you're having more fun and you're enjoying your life, you're not going to hit anybody. That's why I recommend going out. Like, little stress is uh, again, laughing and then yeah. letting people yeah. I, I do it when I do sip my cereal that we live in a bowl, but I don't. You know, if I'm not in the right frame of mind, then I'm not going to shop. Yeah. Other than that, you learn uh, restraint. Right. Kids teach you that too, I agree. Right, right. And so and yeah, we and so we want you to be better. 
better in all of those relationships, right? And you, you know me, look, my big fear, I do not want to be a grumpy ass old man. That's my biggest goddamn fear, right? Every old man I knew was grumpy as hell. <laughs> you know, I didn't know any, grump, any old men that weren't grumpy as fuck. Why is this dude so goddamn, is that my fate? Am I just going to grow up and be a grumpy ass old man? Right? So I don't want to, you know, that frightens me, right? So I'm trying to, like, change, right? Uh, so we're talking about value, right? Just uh, being a, just a little bit different. Just change a little bit. Don't go home and try to change everything. We got 52 weeks. So just a little bit, you know? Try it. I don't want you to, you know, like, the worst thing we could do is me take you to the gym and try to get you started on a fitness program and have you do so much stuff you can't come back for another three months. Everybody does that. Right? I'd rather you just do one push-up and feel hella fun and, and confident and come back we do two tomorrow, right? Gradual changes, right? That you can, so you can stay consistent and learn how. Don't expect too much. Don't expect her to give you a parade because your ass is acting the way you're supposed to act, right? It's just going to be a gradual change, right? And expect some resistance. Expect some pushback. Expect some of your family trying to find the old you, not trusting you, right? This isn't going to work. He's not going to be like that. You go talk to him. He's still an asshole, that, right? So I don't expect it to change overnight, right? But just slow, gradual, one thing at a time. If you change one thing, that'd be enough. That'd be great, right? But create some value, right? Deal with some stuff. Uh, now, remember, remember what we were talking about. Mammals are different than other animals, right? One of the biggest ways you can create value in your relationship is for your, your family members and friends, when they have a problem, to be able to turn to you, right? Harry Harlow, the Harlow experiments. You remember those uh, where he had the monkeys in the cage? You've seen these before. He had the monkeys in the cage, and he had the terry cloth monkey and the wire monkey. He took, he took the mothers away from the, the, the infants, right? And all of them had personality problems because they didn't have the affection, the mother, the motherly love. So what he discovered is when we do that, fathers or mothers, is that mammals turn to when we feel uh, upset, frightened. We turn to another mammal, right? But when, but when he took the mothers away, we, he found out that we turn on each other. Not too on. So they started fighting. They started being aggressive. Yeah, that. So one of the biggest things you can do in your relationship is be the person your family can turn to. Be that person. Right? That's value. That's how you can create a whole bunch of value. You might not understand what she's feeling. You might not understand what she's talking about. But at least receive what she's saying. Right? Try to be that person. Now, here's the problem. Uh, some of us grew up with caregivers. I'm a little kid. I go out into the world, and I'm doing stuff, and I become frightened of something. And then I turn back to my caregiver, but my caregiver is more frightening than whatever it is I saw out here. So I can't turn back to my caregiver, and I can't deal with this right here. Now I'm just kind of stuck. you know. And so what do you think happens in that situation? What do you imagine would happen to somebody that had that go on? You bet. You bet. What else? Right, right. Who, what do you think would happen? I'm, I, I'm, I got a caregiver. I leave my caregiver to go out in the world and explore. I, I'm frightened by something, but I can't turn back to the caregiver because they got some sort of issue. What would happen to me? Yeah, we'd probably be depressed, probably be aggressive, probably turn to drugs. Probably have a yeah, probably have a lot of trouble with trust in a relationship, right? So so I got the beginning of a whole bunch of problems. I try to disguise it, right? I try to hide it from myself, 
right? But I'd be trying to cope in some kind of way, and I'd have all kinds of problems. So that's basically what we're trying to overcome, right? We're trying to be different kinds of people, right? We're trying to be that person that you can turn to me, right? And I'm not going to scare you. I'm not going to beat you up. I'm not going to, you know, if some of us heard this. If you come back here, if you get beat up in the street again and you come back here, I'm going to beat your ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some, some of us heard that. Yeah, yeah. Right, 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 right. And that set us up for some problems, right, that we're trying to deal with now, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? Right. <laughs> you better go back to the end. You coming home with your ass. Right. I want my dad to my Right, ass, right. 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 Now, now what you got? Now what you got is you got you got dad over here, and you got big kid over here, right? And you're going out, right? You're running into big kid. You can't go back here. So now you got to go. You know, you got drugs. You got uh, sex. You got video games. You got crime. <laughs> you know, video games place to hide. You know, I can hide. If I don't feel good, video games will soothe me. You know, I can go someplace, right? So we got, you know, not, and none of these things, none of these things in and of themselves are, are bad things, right? But if, you, if the problem is really I can't turn back to my caregiver for the support that I need, these, can, these compulsions can take off. They take, they take off, right? Where that becomes my routine way of dealing with life on life's term. And then with if, you know, all of these things take on a life of their own. Right? Yeah, yeah, can't be food. Right, 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 right. Sure, sure, sure. I can turn to food. And food is good because it'll make me bigger. It'll, like, give me some armor. Right? Yeah, make me bigger. Make me feel more. Yeah. And remember, it's not, it's not what you're eating. It's what's eating you. You know? Yeah, so it's what's bothering you. A lot of people are um, stress eaters, right? And that's what uh, belly fat is about, stress eating, right? Yeah, you want to go eat, huh? Yeah, right, food, food won't ever turn you down, will it? Right, so neither will porn, right? Porn is always available. You don't get rejected with porn. You know, it's always there. These things are always kind of available, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You never get rejected with porn, right? And, and, and look, porn in and of itself isn't a problem. The problem is when you're complaining about, well, when she wants me now, I'm, I'm spent. I'm spent now. Or she's complaining about my porn use, right? So it's creating a problem for you in that way. But none of these things, you know, are a problem in and of themselves. But it's when they become, like, rigidly adhered to and they start creating problems in my life that we've got to look at them. Okay? So you always want to be able to turn to someone. Right? Biggest reason why I think I've been able to stay away from drugs is I, got, I found some people that I could turn to where I wouldn't need to turn to drugs anymore. You know, so now I can talk to somebody about how I'm feeling rather than, you know, trying to mask them or numb them with drugs. Well, if you, if you, well, 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 what, well, look. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I can kind of answer that. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Look, look, look at this. This is kind of what happened. Hold on. Let me show you. I'm walking around with these just for that. All right. Uh, now, you know, one of the things that I do for this agency and another one is I sign off on treatment plans to get people into treatment, okay, drug treatment. Now, these people are not recreational users. These, these folks, you know, this is the Costco of drug use right here, okay. This is, the substance is often taken in larger amounts over a longer period than was intended. Client reports he never intended to use every day, right. There's a persistent desire or unsuccessful efforts to cut down or control the use of the substance. Client made several attempts to stop using but was unsuccessful. Check. Um, 
a great deal of time is spent in activities necessary to obtain the substance, uh, use the substance, or recover from its effects. Client reports losing track of time when using. Okay? Craving or strong desire or urge to use the substance. Client reports still having urges to use. Right? Recurrent substance use resulting in a failure to fulfill major obligations at work, school, or home. Client reports losing interest in activities including work when using. Right? Oh, it, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and then you're using, you're doing what we call using against your will, right? Right, right. You're not, you're, you're unhappy, but you still have to use to stay straight, right? So that's the way it starts out, right? You know, yeah, 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 yeah. And now, now we got a different kind of problem. In the past, you could use, and then you could come back and get clean, and you could find housing. But now... You know, we're all, this is critical. This is an emergency. We got to keep these relationships together because they're going to relate to how well you can keep your housing together, right? If you're leaving and breaking up and having to move every time you break up in a relationship, it puts you at great risk of being, uh, being uh, homeless. Now, the, the, situ the game has changed. Yeah, the game has changed. And when a bad habit meets a new situation, you have a catastrophe. I had, a, I had a guy, I think I told you guys this, right? A uh, uh, young guy used to come to the DV group when it was in another place. And what he would do is he liked snorting heroin, and he was a D-boy. He liked Mustangs and, and dress and fly and all that. But he liked me. He liked the group, and he would come. But what he, what he would do is he would uh, get high. He'd start selling dope to have all the money. Then he'd get high. And then he would find himself out of control, and he'd get arrested. That would pull him off the block. He'd go to jail for a little while. And he was basically using jail for drug rehab, right? But he did that maybe seven times over the course of the years that I knew him. And on the seventh time, you know, he left the block. The set changed on the block. Now he comes back to establish himself, and they shot him. Young dude, too. He was in his 20s. Young dude. Yeah, and they shot him. So it... it it is progressive, incurable, and fatal, right, a drug addiction. So you want to look at that. And so what we're doing, we're talking about creating value. We're talking about uh, improving the quality of our relationships. What I'm also trying to do is try to help inoculate you against homelessness. There's a lot of men on the street pushing. There's a buggy out there with your name on it. Yeah, there is one, right? We're trying to keep you from having, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's real easy in the state of California now to be homeless. And one of the ways you can do that is through, could you step out of the house, please? That can trigger a whole cascading effect on your finances. Somebody just hit me. Uh, somebody read something on my blog and sent me an article about the financial damage of domestic violence. You know, this week I didn't get a chance to read it yet. Okay, so we want to try to cre create some value so that you don't have that problem. You, you know, know. I've been hearing a lot about that, that, that drug problem on the news, too, man. There's been a lot of uh, domestic violence cases lately on the news. Sure, yeah. sure. To be honest, and that's like Santa Fe County. Sure. It just started uh, passing a lot of domestic violence. Yeah, yeah. man. Hey, yeah. Man, See, that's why they probably start a registry at some point because it's, you know, we're having a tough time with it. Hey, that's how the media does it. Yeah, they do. Huh? Well, right, and it brought new awareness to it, right? Right, right, right. Well, look at, look at, look at the president. The president, look at the president. The president is saying, "Grab him by the pussy," and if you're famous, you can get away with it, right? <laughs> right, right, right. 
But now, but now at, at the same time, that represents an opportunity for us, right? Right? This is an opportunity. You know, we don't have enough people that can do what needs to be done to try to help other men. We just don't have enough people. We don't have enough people that other men can turn to and talk to, and you can say, hey, I went through that. You can, it can be all right. This is what you do. Right, 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 right. But we don't have enough people that work in this area, right? And most therapy is going to be performed by just regular everyday people. It's going to be you. It's going to be you talking to another man about, hey, man, you don't have to act like that. Or if they just come to you. I don't mean, inter I don't mean getting involved in somebody else's stuff, but people notice you. They notice your success. They notice your value, and they may ask you, like, what are you doing in order to be, in order to live the life you're living? Well, I'm, right. Right. His wife moved to Hawaii or what have you, and high pressure actually means now, lovely one now. Right. He's taking and he's still working on things and right. you know, he got children and stuff, but uh, I brought him into my apartment and he said to me, he says, like, dude, I go up to what you were with Jacqueline, I was used to go to the, the one weight room, treadmill, stop there, get like you do all the damn time. Right. You know, get yourself out of the house, go walk, go jog, right, go right, 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 right. That, and that's a serious intervention right there. And, and he sits in my room now, and you know what I do with him? I ask him to play chess. He says, real good. All right, go play chess. Right. Go ahead, move whenever you want. Right. 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 You know, that way you're right. out of that refrigerator. The drink is so much. Though. Right. Nothing but drowning yourself in liquor, man. But that, that liquor is, you, you know, know so, yeah, because the liquor is a depressant. So if you have depression, it makes you more depressed. Yeah. 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 Right. You could, yeah, right. Real. You, be, you could be the first goddamn beer of the day, but you grabbing that beer like, I'm grabbing this beer because I know I'm right. 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 I'm like, right. 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 All right. Exactly. All right. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah, but that beer tastes so good when it's cold, man. Yeah, he's dry and hot. All right. So, so what did what did uh what did KRS One say? What did KRS One say? He said, "Drink water, not ale. Pay tuition, not bail." <laughs> right? Huh? That's KRS One, right? So, 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 uh, if if you want to quit. You can quit, right? If you want to make a quit attempt, you can make a quit attempt. That'd be good. You'll probably do that over the 52 weeks that we're together. I, we'll try to help you with that, right? Um, now, if, if we were going to try to quit something, how would you go about it? Right? Whenever I'm not working, I don't really care about it. It's, it's put yourself in a position where you don't go to a sports bar all the time. Right, 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 right. Well, let me let me try to let me try to help you let me try to help you a little bit, right? Because like, it's not like a big detriment. I just figured it would help out a whole. It'll help out a whole bunch. A whole bunch. Yeah, yeah, a whole bunch. Finances, yeah, yeah, whole bunch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, if you're gonna quit, right? Most people, and and I'm gonna say this: most people do quit drugs, and most people do quit on their own, right? But but something happens a lot of times for people to quit, right? And what we want to try to avoid is that addict wake-up call. You know, I don't want you to get a DUI and decide to find religion then, right? Because the DUI is $10,000, right? So we don't want to do that, right? Um, so what you do if you want to try to quit is you set a quit date. That day you were talking about the flowers on the calendar? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make a quit date, right? And the quit date is usually two weeks out. Quit date. Now look, look, why out of all the periods of time, why two weeks? Why not six months? Uh, yeah, we're going to use the two weeks for prep time for quitting, right? Yeah, and if you go out any farther, you just bullshit. <laughs> right? Right? So two weeks. Now in the two-week period, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? This is from Tobacco Research. What do we do? Get rid of all substances and paraphernalia and life triggers. If you got Budweiser t-shirts at the house, send them to Goodwill. 
If you got a, a beer stein you drink out of, donate it. If you got a six pack in the refrigerator, drink it or get rid of it within the two week period, right? Get rid of it, right? So we got two weeks. Two weeks. All right, now, 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 at, t at the two week point, and on the day of the quit, what are we preparing for? What are we doing all this for? Wait a minute, wait a minute. I want you to get specific now. You're right, but I, but I want to get specific about why are we taking two weeks to get ready to quit? What are we, you know, we're getting ready for the quit date, right, in other words, right? Now, what do we expect to happen when we quit? DT. DT. Whatever they call it. huh? Yeah. What else? What else? What else? What else are we expecting? Yeah, agitation. Look, 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 look. I'm going to put it all in one phrase for you. Craving. Here it comes. Here it comes. And we got to be ready. Okay? It's going to come in. You, you, it'll come in when you don't realize it. It'll come in when it's not invited, but it's coming. Craving. That's what we got to get ready for. Now, look, all, all this, yeah, all this is a part of craving. This is the big reason why people don't quit. These people right here, they can't quit on their own because when they stop, they get dope sick. And they know what to do about the dope sickness. I got to go find another one. God damn it, give me another one. We got to have another one, and then they start back again. This is the same thing with your woman, too. If any of you are leaving your woman as a result of this, you want to, like, give yourself a chance to quit. Right? And then now what happens? Okay, we got a, we got a, uh, we got a rat in a cage and we give them, you know, access to cocaine. Right? And so he's going, he's going to he's gonna hit for the cocaine. He's going to hit for the cocaine. Uh, now this is, this is, he doesn't have anything else in the cage. Now. Okay. Just, he's going to have cocaine. He's going to hit for cocaine, get the right amount in his blood system. When it goes down, he's going to hit again. He's going to hit again. He's going to hit again. What happens when you take the cocaine away? Boom, 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 boom. And they think that was sugar. Craving. Right? Then after he realizes. Yeah, yeah. After, after yeah, you're going to have hit, 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 hit. Then you're going to have a burst of craving. And then on the other side, you're going to have a flat line. Same thing here, right? You're going to crave, 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 crave. And then you're going to flat line. Okay, we got to manage this part right here. And so the way we're going to do that is you're going to decide what you're going to substitute for beer, what you're going to do. Am I going to go to a meeting? Am I going to drink water instead? Am I going to, uh, what am I going to do orally and, and uh, physically? So what we need is we need a coping skill. <laughs> you got to be careful with Odul's, right? And why do you have to be careful with Odul's? Yeah, remember, remember, remember the, uh, remember the, uh, uh, remember, remember, what was that deep sea, the, the animation under the sea, uh, uh, Pixar, yeah, Find Nemo. Remember the shark? The shark went to the meeting, and 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 the, and the, and the, and the started bleeding. I smell blood. Right, and he went on one. Right? Yeah, yeah. So, so that's. <laughs> <laughs> see, that's why we want to be careful. That's why we want to be careful with Odul. See, I don't want near beer. I want real beer. And I know where to get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wants some beer. All right, so, so we got to get through this period, right? This craving period. It's going to be hell. Every cell in your body is going to be screaming for the substance, right? We, we know that. But this is a limited period of time. Maybe... Uh, with tobacco, it's going to be maybe two or three days. With alcohol, it might be a little longer. With marijuana, it might be a little longer. But we got a plan to get through this period so we can have some clean time on the other side. So we got to figure out what we're going to do in here. We have to expect it, right? So the craving doesn't come like a thief in the night when it knocks on the door. Doom, doom, doom. Who is it? It's a craving. Oh, come on in. <laughs> right? Come on in. And then what you do is you... You, uh, what I would, what I would suggest we do, like with most feelings, right? You, you, uh, this is called the Japanese tea house, right? Open the door, 
and then you open the door and let the craving come through. You don't, you don't close the doors, and now you just got the craving. Yeah, you, you know it's coming, right? Oh, it's just you. Right, okay, you hear it. Acceptance, right? Tolerance, the same principles we were talking about. Open it, you know I'm craving. Right? You go someplace and talk about that, the same stuff. And then over time, the craving period is over, and although you still will have cravings, 23 years I've been clean, and I still, you know, them boys who smoke that chronic out there, I still feel like, ooh, that smells interesting. <laughs> so you still crave, right? But, 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 I feel like while wow, the life that I have now is so much better, you know, I take a hit, we don't get together anymore. You know, and this is one of the highlights of my damn week, coming down here with, with us, right? And so I don't get to keep this life that I had. I get to be like these people banging on doors trying to get into somebody's treatment program in the middle of, December, of November. And see, we've been lucky. The weather hasn't been that bad yet. But it's getting ready to get, this is not the time of year to be homeless. Right? No time of year is really cool, but this ain't. Yeah. Yeah, so we got to keep our, you know, we're trying to keep not only our relationship with our partner, but also our relationship with housing. Trying to keep that, right? With employment, you know, with our kids, with, you know, our health. You going to the gym, which is a damn good idea, right? So and it's a, these are all ways of, I think it is a good idea to get off substances, because one, you don't need them, and two, they will help you money-wise. Oh, yeah. And if they haven't done any more for you than they have, it's probably time to look at getting off of them. But now, now keep in mind now, keep it, keep in mind, keep in mind, I don't care how much you drink. That's not my question. My question is what happens to you if you start drinking? If you come in here talking about, I got how many DUIs? That's three too many. Okay? That's already severe impairment to your life. 